Mr. Speaker, thank you very much. Mr. Speaker, I, st I could not, Mr. Speaker, I could not sit without standing here to support <coughs> this resolution, which, Mr. Speaker, authorizes the Minister for Finance to guarantee borrowing by the St. Lucia Development Bank for the housing sector and productive sector of St. Lucia. Mr. Speaker, I will be brief, but I want to ask you for a few seconds of leave just to join the Minister with responsibility for sports and the Member of Parliament for Grosile, just to join him and the rest of my colleagues in congratulating Julian Alfred for her contribution to the building, for what she has done, Mr. Speaker. I want to do so on behalf of my constituents, on behalf of my family, and all St. Lucians from all around the world. Mr. Sin Mr. Speaker, Julian Alfred's contribution is phenomenal. Her contribution to the building of the St. Lucian ethic, a St. Lucian work ethic, a St. Lucian tradition of excellence on behalf of her people will resonate for many, many decades to come. What she has done, Mr. Speaker, speaks volumes. And she's an example of the St. Lucianness which we often speak about on this side of the house. Look at where she's from, a humble, small community, Mr. Speaker. Look at her struggles, what she went through, and how she had to climb the walls of adversity. Look at her, even in, in the full glare of the world, Mr. Speaker. Look at her humility, how humble she is, and how she speaks about the love for her country every single time. What a wonderful champion for hope, Mr. Speaker, champion for the young people of St. Lucia, a flag bearer of positive change. I wanted to take this opportunity to, to say thanks to Julian Alfred on behalf of my constituents. Mr. Speaker, this resolution is very important, and many of my colleagues, including the Member of Parliament for Castries East, have spoken about it. And it speaks, Mr. Speaker, to the development of housing and the productive sector. Putting you first, Mr. Speaker, really, is not just a slogan. It is not just what we say whenever we speak on this side of the house, but putting you first is actually the way we live, the way we work in this government, Mr. Speaker. When you look at the effects or the impacts which will be caused by this guarantee, you can see hope, especially among public servants. I recall, Mr. Speaker, my days as a member of the executive of the St. Lucia Teachers Union. And the Teachers Union always tried to find ways of creating opportunities for housing. I remember the days when we started the St. Lucia Teachers Credit Cooperative, Mr. Speaker. And I remember my, my book number, 202. And how, Mr. Speaker, how, Mr. Speaker, together we developed a powerful institution, again, to assist teachers in the purchase of, of property, housing, and so on. And Mr. Speaker, you can see now the, the asset base of the, of the Teachers Credit Union. Over $100 million, I'm told, by the former president of the Teachers Union, Dr. Vuj, um, the Member of Parliament for Babuno. So Mr. Speaker, when I see a guarantee like this in Parliament, as a teacher myself, I feel empowered to go to my colleague teachers and to say to them once again, this government is working for you. Give them hope. It reminds me also, Mr. Speaker, that public servants and teachers have another avenue, another avenue through which they can develop themselves and their families. And I just want to add very quickly, Mr. Speaker, that this year, the Teachers Union will celebrate 90 years of existence, Mr. Speaker. A phenomenal achievement. And it's so important while we speak of this, 
and we have former presidents of the teachers union among us the member of parliament for view for south is a former president of the teachers union the member of parliament for babuno is another former president of the teachers union there are other individuals here who served the the, the civil service association the member of parliament for library was an executive member and so all of this ties in to the love that we have for our public servants and those who continue to build the society in St. Lucia. Mr. Speaker, I am very optimistic about the possibilities for the productive sector, the small business, the creative economy, and in a very special way, the health and wellness economy in St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker. You do not know, Mr. I'm sure you may know, but honorable members must take some time to investigate and to understand the importance of the health and wellness sector as part of the productive sector in St. Lucia. Many times we do not think of all of the investments in health and wellness, the small businesses, the doctors, the, the pharmacists, and those who are in, in alternative medicine, those who are in, in, in massaging and so on, Mr. Speaker, mental wellness. All of these areas can benefit from assistance of this from the assistance of this guarantee this is in addition to what this government has done by the removal of VAT and other duties on very sensitive equip medical equipment for so many small businesses in St. Lucia and when we think of small businesses many times we do not think of so many doctors and professionals who have opened offices throughout St. Lucia and with the assistance of government bringing in, importing very expensive, sensitive medical equipment to assist with the overall improvement of the health sector in St. Lucia. This here, Mr. Speaker, will assist. I can say to you that the private sector, private public partnership in healthcare will continue with this support. This is another avenue for our doctors and our medical professionals to go to the St. Lucia Development Bank and to get loans at, at low interest rates to help expand their businesses. And Mr. Speaker, this expansion, which will continue to happen as a result of this guarantee, is just part of the partnership. The Ministry of Health, Wellness and Elderly Affairs continues to partner with the health sector, the private health sector. You see what we are doing in maternal and child care services, where the ultrasounds and the blood tests are being done in the private sector, private sector partnership, Mr. Speaker, in healthcare. You see what we are doing with the new services for cervical cancer. And again, most of the lab tests and so on, or a good pro proportion of it is being done in the private sector in health. And so this facility will assist. Mr. Speaker, I could not help but, but, but pay attention and focus on what the member for Schwozel said in terms of the elderly and their, and their homes and what, what he said about the, the condition of elderly people, of older people in St. Lucia. It is very important, Mr. Speaker, for us to focus on this. Today is not the time for it specifically, but just to say that this government understands this and not only has the Prime Minister made allocations for us to assist the, the, the older people in our community with, with assistance to, the, to their homes and so on, but also we are working very hard to ensure that we develop a program, we develop programs for the elderly, the Elder Affairs Division, to take care of, of all of those issues that we are facing. We ha our population is aging, and if you look at the, 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 the pyramid, Mr. Speaker, it's very interesting to see what, is happen what has happened now compared to 10 years ago. Our people are, are, are no longer as productive as they were before, we, we were doing this maternal and child care services and we are realizing that we are having under 2,000 births per year over the last five years or so. And one of the medical doctors told me, Minister, we suspect this year we, we may go below 1,500 1, births. So this is very important and the, 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 the population is aging and therefore our policies, Mr. Speaker, must continue to focus on this situation which we, which we already have and we will continue to have. But just to say to the member for Schwozel that it is this government, it is this government 
that has provided him with resources to assist in this situation. It is this government that has provided the leader of the opposition with resources. It is this prime minister who has provided the leader of the opposition with resources and he can go to his constituency and put plywood on houses even though we are not proud of the way he's doing it. <laughs> even though we are not proud with the kind of matchsticks he is giving to the people. And we are absolutely sure that the resources given to him by the Prime Minister can do much better. But again, Mr. Speaker, I'm convinced that he's not sensitive to those things. He's not sensitive to those things. And it is this government that has given them the opportunity to assist the older people in their communities. Just as we are doing, we want much more because we can see the condition that many of our older people live in our constituencies. And we want much more. But for him to come here to talk about what this government is doing or not doing or allocation of resources, the member for Shrozel should tell the people of St. Lucia that this government is a different kind of government. Even though he does not support our government, he should say that this government is different. Be honest, say the truth, and say that this government is different. We are different kind of government. We can go back the last five years when we were in opposition, and every single member who was in opposition, including the member for Viewfort South, Dr. Ken Dr. Kenny Anthony, sorry, the member for Viewfort South. The six of us who are in opposition, nothing. The people of Vieja for North can go back to these five years and ask whether any assistance was given to them through their parliamentary representative. They gave all of the assistance to British Airways lookalikes and Virgin Atlantic lookalikes trying to go to London. <laughs> that is where the assistance was channeled. And nobody knew where it went to, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, gouvernement ça a venu ici à ca garantir l'argent à dit dans banque développement banque là pour ti chasse sur votre civil docteur nos avec monde qui voulait faire caille, monde qui voulait bâtir caille avec mon société à qui voulait faire caille au primaire. Mam parlement choisi ca venir ici à Mr. Speaker et ca dit ca ca mande question à les allocation qui sa gouvernement kabayo, pa kabayo. Mwete en opposition, combien fois, et dernier 5 ans avant nous gagner l'élection, M. Speaker. Mwete en opposition, même parlement vieux fort south, même parlement denry north, laboui, castries south, avec premier ministre la même. Nous venons ici à nous mande au moins, là nous mande question, yo dit nous, if it's that you crying for you, just start to cry. C'est ça yo dit nous. So, Jean Vieux Fort Neuf, pas joué dans rien, sorti en gouvernement. Pour 5 l'année. Ça y a fait. Yo bay moun an ki te, yo vle mouté pour élection. Yo di ki ka mouté British Airways pour aller à uh, London Bridge is falling down and will continue to fall down. Yo passe la, la Jean avec différents bagay, assistance, et nous passe à ça qui fait tepi. Et le gouvernement, ça là, le premier ministre a fait allocation, opposition a joué tout. Et il a joué l'argent pour bâtir Kaye, et manger Kaye, c'est plus grand monde en communauté. Ça nous a fait, leader de l'opposition a fait des tibas avec trois chutes de plaie, et les bois à l'imètre en bas, et c'est mon constituency. Et le premier ministre a fait assez l'argent pour manger Kaye, c'est mon nom. Qui ça a fait l'argent? A constituency nous, Mr. Speaker, le many town hall meeting, mon ka dise mouna, monies for so and so come from CDP. Monies from so and so, this concrete road over there, from CDP, funded by the Taiwanese, allocated by the Minister for Finance. Se mouna sa wè tout se bagay la. And, sa se di fou mwans nan gouvernement wè gouvernement yo, yo ni pou vina parlan mwè di la verite. Dat gouvernement nou pa kon sa yo. Même parlement qui a suivi ce qu'il y a, qui a alloqué l'argent, 
et même si yo pas ban nous pas dessous et ça nous gouvernement nous c'est un gouvernement chez nous pousser mouna mais c'est speaker ça yo ka fait c'est bail mes prix acheter pour la dieu et bail mon parole mais nous mêmes c'est pour aider moun so mr speaker i want to support this this guarantee this motion this resolution mr speaker for the guarantee and just to say mr speaker this is just another example another example to show you why the people of vie for north and the people of saint lucia should never and can never support the opposition mr speaker another example another example to show you why the public servants of this country should never and can never support the opposition mr speaker why police nurses doctors firemen firewomen all public servants here is an opportunity mr speaker and when they are going to warn the public servants and call for war we are ensuring that we create opportunities for them to better themselves mr speaker that's the difference and you know when they can't beat you in debates i saw that quote i can't remember the author i must say it's not my quote and i'm not i don't even think i'm saying it verbatim but the idea that when they cannot beat you with the facts and the debate what do they what do they go to personal insults and attacks that's where they are but we are going to continue mr speaker to deliver on our promises to deliver on our promises putting people first and when the prime minister decides to call to ring that bell he said he's coming <laughs> he said he's coming mr speaker coming. so that when he decides the people of vie for north, north and the people of saint lucia will return this government to office to continue to put the people first thank you mr speaker